Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we're doing something completely new. We are going to draw flowers. So we're going to use pen and ink and do some lovely line drawing doodles to get you started with learning how to structure a flower that way. So grab your pens and let's get started. So that was a bit of a change wasn't it? I said get your pens ready and that is because today we are using a fine line pen. So I'm using two different sizes of the Windsor and Newton fine liner range. In the episode notes below you'll find the link to get those. Um, so I've got a 0.1 and a 0.3. Um, 0.1 is the finest tip, 0.3 is a tiny bit bigger. And the great thing about these is they are colour fast so it means you could draw something and then paint a wash over the top and the pen would stay put. However today what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of painting first. So we're going to do some simple washes. I've got my um, my pink tones already woken up and what I want to do is just create some really simple washes with my one wash flat head brush. So beginning first I've got um, a very vague grid just for a helpful reference for me but all I'm gonna do is some really simple pink toned little washes as a nice background for my floral doodles and what I'm doing is I'm just sort of mixing together pinks and oranges to create a fun series of blush and pink tones. Um, so I've got permanent rose in there and then I've also got some opera rose and all I'm doing really is just messing about with it a bit just seeing what I come up with but the important thing is that I am just doing a singular simple stroke with my one wash brush. Now I've got some Alizar and Crimson, we'll get a slightly deeper colour. Lovely. But the important thing is, is on the whole I'm using a very dilute amount of colour here because I want that to dry nice and translucent to then allow me to paint pretty much whatever I want on top. But yeah, we're going to begin with some mini floral doodles, which means these flowers I'm gonna draw aren't necessarily 100% botanically accurate, but they are a lovely introduction to starting to draw flowers because we do a lot of painting with flowers and I thought actually before I was a watercolour artist my main medium was doing line drawings and pen and ink and I really loved it and then the greatest joy I get is when I combine watercolour with pen and ink. So we're just going to let that dry 100% and get drawing. Our page is now completely touch dry so that's brilliant so let's get started. Now I think it's always a nice thing to give ourselves a fighting chance so we're going to begin with some pencil lines just to begin and we're going to start with a daisy and essentially I'm going to mark in the stems first and then those central circles that I always like to make a point of when I'm doing any kind of watercolour painting and so I'm going to begin with the actual flower itself and these are going to be sort of nice wild kind of oxide daisies and what I like with this is they're just a little bit floppy we're always anchoring those petals in to the center regardless of how they're sort of flopping out or angling out and then just using the pen and some sort of series of little dots to create that central flower. And this one will do even more on an angle. So I've done a sort of dome and then done my flowers, petals coming out. And we might see one those petals are just flopping out and about just a little bit that's rather nice and then just a few extra little dots like that and then down comes the stem nice and slender it's kind of fun to do two lines if you want I 
and then the leaves so we can get these in the gaps. Central line first. And I'm being much more sort of playful and free with these. I'm not so worried about things being completely perfect. With doodles, it's all about just creating a lovely shape and composition. And then with my finer pen, I might just do a few little lines coming out. And there's our first little doodle, whoops. Okay, next, I'm going to just do a lovely kind of sprig spray of flowers, just sort of maybe a little bit like lavender, because we're sort of starting with nice, simple flowers and ones that we have painted on the channel. So I've got my stems and I'm going to start by just working my way down creating these little loops and then towards the bottom maybe a few simple ones they sort of come in clusters don't they but they're not always completely even, lavender. But it's such a satisfying little one to draw. A really nice doodle you could just keep drawing over and over. Lovely. Okay. So I think up here. I'm going to paint, uh, paint, gosh, I've got to get out of that habit. Let's do some allium style flowers. So we're still with our stems. We'll get the pencil out again. We'll have a little curl over here. And I've got size three. And I'm just going to sort of create little sort of fireworks coming out of the top. Like I said, these are doodles very much, so what's kind of fun is you can create your own interpretation. And I'm just doing a few little extra ones in there, even though we don't need to have the stems the whole time. But yeah, when I was younger, I actually much preferred drawing in sort of essentially black and white as I saw it. Um, I didn't really like colour very much at all. I, I was a bit intimidated by it. And it's been in becoming a watercolour artist and really embracing colour theory. And the main reason I love watercolour is that colour can be really delicate and it doesn't have to be all dominant and saturated and bold it can be really nice and delicate and it can be a kind of supporting act to the colour as well and then we'll have just one down here so you've got your little curves out and then some little loops and then just in the gaps where you don't need a stem every time. So this is all looking nice, but we haven't got anything with real foliage on it yet. So let's do a nice foliage leaf shape down here. So I'm going to begin <laughs> with my pencil and just create that nice stem shape just by doing curves that sort of come off it at each angle and just 
start with a slightly thicker stem at the bottom. So I like to do the, the little central line of the leaf first, which then helps me draw in that little shape. And then I'm just adding some little dots, but I'm not always adding in a stem to go with those dots because I don't think you have to do that each time. So I'm just going to repeat the process of this one, uh, a central line to then pop a leaf on and then add in a little dot. Lovely. Now let's do something a little bit like a snowdrop. So I'm going to <laughs> always want to start with my pen first, but it is very sensible to just give yourself a little bit of a guide with the pencil. So I've done two sort of crossed over curves, which are just going to loop up and around. And again, I love to do a nice little double line. Now a snowdrop has a funny little loop that comes up for we get our actual drop. Now I know that this will be a lovely thing to pop into your journal if you're into journaling um, or what a nice card design I think would be really really cool. I'm just going to give these a little bit of shading and then some leaves. Okay, let's move on to another one. I just love kind of sitting here and thinking about all the different flowers that we could possibly do. And then ones that don't even really technically exist in, in real life. They're just ones that sort of pop out of my brain. So I'm gonna pop in another sort of slightly fantasy style one. You may well recognize it and say, oh, Harriet, that's a, that's a one of these. But essentially starting off with a stem like that and then just sort of having a bit of fun with it. So I'm going to begin, I'm going to put a little bit more of a petal flower in. So I'm going to start with some dots and then this time some petals that have got a bit of a sort of frill to the edge. Still anchoring them. I mean, it's got a slightly sort of clematis look but I'm not sure I'm not sure and then we can angle our flower up so we just create a slightly more squashed center and our petals in turn just a little bit squashed themselves And we'll put in another little flower down here. It's funny, if you haven't sort of used a pen to write or draw with for a while, you can very quickly get a bit of arm ache or wrist ache. So just, you know, Take it easy, go slowly. Let's get our stem in. And now let's get some lovely leaves. So I think I'll have some leaves that sort of grow beyond. Some nice long slender leaves. The other reason I love watercolour 
uh, using it in this style is because as well as not really enjoying colour when I was younger, I also hated colouring in. I just really thought colouring inside the lines was the most restrictive and uncreative thing possible. So this kind of drawing and painting for me is perfect. Okay, let's move on to another one. And I think I want to draw some poppies. So just some simple ones though, mind. So we'll have three there. So I'm gonna begin with a sort of cup shape. And these big petals. And I can use my large pen for the detail. And then this one will actually will actually see into the poppy. always a bit of a wiggle to the stem and then we can do a nice seed head okay this is looking lovely we've just got two more so what shall we do well I think another nice sort of big open flower would be rather lovely so I'm gonna do one get my stems sorted first with my pencil and now so it's going to be a nice big center first and the nice thing with doing pen and ink is you can really get the detail in those centers first so I'm going to do three petals and then I'm going to come in behind And create a little cluster of dots. It's got a sort of anemone kind of vibe, hasn't it? And just add a few more dots. But this is where we're going to go off piste a little bit because we're going to do some slightly different leaves going to have them sprouting all out and about. I'm going to have a little bit of a serrated edge. Still using the central lines of what we've drawn here and just wiggling the pen in the same way we do to wiggle the edge of the brush whenever we're painting serrated edge leaves and then we will just fill in all these little lines so those are all done and then we'll just get a few little bits of detail in on that flower itself. It's funny because I'm using these lovely fine lines and they are an absolute joy to use, but because we painted in our watercolour first, actually the joy of this is you could use any sort of fine line pen, ballpoint, biro, anything you wanted because it's just doodling. We're just sort of learning the basics at the moment. And then I'm going to finish off with the most popular flower on my YouTube tutorials, which is the wonderful tulip. So I've got the wonderful sort of loopy languid stems and I'm just going to draw in a lovely cup shape and then just kind of build on it a little bit. Maybe do a few lines 
up from the bottom. So little oval egg shape, but don't sort of go all in at the top and then you can just sort of start to fill it in as you please. Maybe add a petal around the side, one in the front. And then one just looping over. And then we'll get some leaves in. So the leaves usually enclose the stems. So we'll draw those in first. So you can see I'm just again using some lines and watching which stem I put my leaf onto. So I'll pop that stem in there. And there we have our introduction to drawing flowers with some mini flower doodles. All we need to do is rub out that pencil and you've got yourself a lovely piece of art. So with my trusty kneadable eraser, just rubbed out all the pencil and we're left with this lovely piece, which would look great as a series of little details in a journal or as a lovely greetings card. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that. There's going to be more of that kind of thing to come. I want to say a massive thank you to my patrons for their support because that support enables us to keep creating these videos that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it, then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you're getting on with that one. And of course, if you subscribe, then you'll never miss another video. Until next time, bye.